It's day three of the Chenin Blanc International Congress. Two brilliant days already, and last night, the dinner on the back of the visit to the old Mefro Kirsten vineyard with Ibn Saadi. How could day three possibly match up? Well, it came pretty close. A couple of very exciting presentations through the course of the day. Some pretty cool dressed up Frenchmen giving out some awards to some very willing and deserving recipients. And a final celebration of Chenin Blanc at what has been a quite incredible three days. So you know you're at a pretty important wine event when even Melu Lambert leaves her mansion in Nürnberg and comes to join in. And that's a big smile on face because there is a real wine nerd within Melu and this is proper wine nerd territory. It's, it's huge geekery that's happening here. I mean, I won't lie, some of it goes over my head because it's quite academic and technical, but it's always rousing the talks. Um, I'd like to talk about the theme, which is reveal of place. Yesterday we were in, in um, the Mafro Kirsten Vineyard and it was just like electric, you know, there was like these clouds gathering and these old vines and suddenly the sky just cracked open with like lightning and just drenched us all in rain. And there we were, you know, drinking Mafro Kirsten in the vineyard, sopping wet and I just thought how more revealing of place can you get? I don't think one of those delegates leaving that tasting is ever going to forget it. Um, and that's what Shannon Blake's about. You've celebrated South African terroir so often mm -hmm. in your writing. You've done so beautifully. Why is it so important to Shannon Blanc? And what are we going to take away from this Congress in that sense? I think, you know, we can talk about terroir and soil and um, all of that, the cars come home. But what's, what really struck me now at a recent um, talk was the people. I think, you know, the French delegates are going to go home with a real sense of people, from the winemakers, to the, um, the various discussions, but also to say like the, the Chenin wheel made with the different dialects. That's hugely inspirational. So I think they're gonna take people with them. Well, then it's been uh, such inspiring and uh, mind-blowing and opening um, Congress. Um, I've learned so much. I thought I knew anything about Shannon, but it actually made me realize that I, there's still many more to, to learn for and might develop some new styles, some um, new ways of getting wine tourism and all about Shannon Blanc. Well, having guys from overseas um, just taking out to the vineyards and show them our sites and um, essence of place. Um, it was so fascinating for them to, to experience that and for us uh, that we're moving in the right direction it's just awesome to have people from all over the world. We've, we've got the age of the vines behind us, um, working with old vines, um, taking old vines further, taking South African Chenin Blanc further and, and where we positioned as um, South African Chenin Blancs amongst the world and in the way that we paved. I didn't actually realize that guys like Ken Forrester and all those guys that paved the way for South African Cine Blanc. So to, to keep for going forward um, and, and drive South African Cine Blanc to be uh, the number one Cine Blanc country to be recognized amongst the world. It's been a great Congress and uh, you know, we've been working on this thing for uh, about three years now and uh, the, the, the original one was in France in, in 2019 and uh, we should have done this last year but COVID put, a, put an end to that and uh, the work that's gone into it has been immense and getting about 90 Frenchmen from uh, various parts of the Mid Loire has been quite an amazing achievement. We've loved having them. They've, they've truly appreciated our environment here and the way we handle Shannon and it's done one hell of a lot for Shannon. And uh, I think the, the, the mix of, of science and marketing and business in the Congress has been great. We've learned something. We've, uh, we've learned a lot about the variety, but also some of the scientific uh, presentations have been great. And then, uh, you know, the marketing presentation and the business presentation this morning was uh, outstanding. So I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. And I've been around for 40 years making Shannon, and I'm still learning. South Africa's focus, white variety, 
in an international context is Shannon. Um, I mean, of course, there's Chardonnay and, and, and Sauvignon Blanc, but Shannon uh, is our USP. And uh, the fact that uh, we are focusing on it has attracted, uh, especially the French, but even people from Australia, and, um, there's Shannon in California and India, but uh, most of it's uh, French and South Africa dominated. But we, we, we intend to make Shannon more widely grown and uh, a variety of importance in, in more countries than just South Africa and France. And it's starting to happen. You know, my, my real understanding is that uh, Shannon has this ability to deliver different things to different people. It's got, it's got great versatility, but as we've tried to show during this Congress, the, uh, the variety has this immense ability to reveal the place that it grows in. And uh, I think that's the beauty with food. And as our, our sommelier Tanash uh, said this morning, um, you know, the, the food that you put on a plate also comes from, uh, from different uh, farms close by to the restaurant. Fresh produce gets put there. And if you can put a, a wine that reveals place uh, alongside that food, it uh, offers something special and a unique experience to the, the person enjoying the, the meal and, uh, and the experience at the restaurant. And um, I think that revealer of places is, is a critical part of Shen, but also to continue making the different styles. I think the versatility of Shen is, is, is a big attraction of the variety. It does confuse the consumer a bit more, but we are making it simpler and we're trying to, with um, a little guide on the back label to, uh, to indicate the style more easily to consumers. And I think once we get that right, uh, consumers will easily be able to identify what style of Shannon they're buying and where they should be consuming it. Dana, I think it's fantastic to see a collaboration between two um, iconic Shannon producers. Uh, you know, we've got the, the, the delegation from France out here. We've obviously got our, our own uh, world-class delegation from South Africa across the different, different regions. But um, really fantastic to see such a, a good initiative, um, multiple different uh, facets. We've looked and heard some scientists, some, uh, some marketing research. We've listened to some winemakers, some soil scientists. It really has been an all-encompassing couple of days here at the, at the Shannon Congress. We've known that, that Shannon Blanc has been uh, very special in South Africa for a long time. Um, we've, been, we've been telling the world about it. Um, but just hearing all of these, these different viewpoints, um, it really does imbue us with, with an inordinate amount of confidence now to be able to go out and, and confidently say that, uh, that some of the best Shannon, if not the best Shannon in the world, comes from, from South Africa. Um, and, and we don't need to make it in a style that's known around the world, uh, in, in different parts of the world. We can really own, own our own identity um, of, of South African Shannon. Um, and I think also, very importantly, we can sell it at the right price. And we should market it at the right price. Um, we, 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 we know the quality stacks up. We know we've got some of the, the most amazing sites in the, in the world for, for Chenin Blanc, and, uh, and we should charge accordingly. I would like to think that, uh, that our international counterparts learned something. Um, I certainly learned something from, from some of the work that, uh, that was presented from, uh, from our French, uh, French friends. Um, so hopefully we've all, all leave the Congress much uh, smarter and wiser. end of the Congress, third day, um, a lot happened, I think, and culminated in the conversations of the week were basically looking f at Chin Blanc as a variety that, um, in the theme of the Congress, the revealer of place, uh, apart from re reflecting from where the Chin Blanc is grown, whether it's in South Africa or a particular region in South Africa or in France or Australia, um, we've had some good examples here from Australia. Uh, it translated into the discussion of climate change and what is the future of Schoenblank specifically in viticulture and how Schoenblank can assist and can work with us if we manage it um, you know, a, a, appropriately uh, to help us to keep a sustainable business going. At the first uh, Schoenblank Congress uh, in Angers, in 2019, um, the entire South African delegation was inducted in, into the Confrérie. 
uh, in Vouvray and uh, that is a great honor. It's almost like a, a brotherhood and uh, you commit to uh, you know, Chenin Blanc and uh, that you are true to Chenin Blanc and that you support the, the grape and the wine in terms of promotion and uh, it, was, uh, it was the first time that they've done this outside of the region here in South Africa this year. Uh, they came out with all the regalia and they brought the medals and the certificates and there was uh, certain individuals that have contributed to the industry for 10, 20, 30 years that were uh, honoured with the induction. And uh, that was a, quite a special moment for us because of the, the people that were, were acknowledged for what they do for, for the one tree, but for Chenin Blanc, uh, for example, um, to Michael Fridgen that's been fighting for Chenin since uh, the 70s, 80s. He's been, he's been looking after Shen when things, when things changed in the 90s and the industry changed from an inward looking domestic market to an export market and that demand changed from white to red wine uh, where we were at 30% uh, plantings of Chenin Blanc and by uh, 94, 96 we had to change that ratio from 40-60 to 60-40 uh, red and uh, the danger was of Shannon being pulled out and Michael was, was uh, prominent in, in, in trying to convince people to keep these vines in the ground and so has um, I many other people like that uh, um, um, that received the induction today like Rosa Kruger that started the Old Vine project 20 years ago that also saw the value of that and, and now we have this treasure, treasure trove of, of, of Shannon and Old Vine Shannon uh, to work with. So what we saw in 2019 was so encouraging because I think the French, they invited us uh, as a partner because uh, we have the most Shannon plantings in the world, more than they've got. But obviously it started there. We got the cuttings in the 1650s by a ship when Jan van Rieg wanted to plant grapes here uh, on the halfway station. But we, we saw the, uh, the, the generosity and the hospitality was, um, was so humbling. Uh, I think people were a bit hesitant about why do France and South Africa want to work together? And it's almost like rugby or, you know, how, why, why do you want to take hands in, in one sport? And I think Ken Forrester might have summed it up more eloquently. The fact that there's a potential cooperation and there's a mutual um, respect. And working together, I think, um, is, is better than working against each other. And we've got two total different styles and approaches in terms of vineyard practice and, and, and winemaking. And it's so interesting to learn from each other. But I think to stand together for Shannon for uh, the international future of Shenan is the objective. And that's what we saw this last week, is how we cemented that uh, sentiment of focusing on Shenan Blanc as a collective. And it's not only France and South Africa. Um, it, it, we had a one from India here, from Sula, two or three producers from Australia, um, California. So we, we are talking to everybody to look at Shenan Blanc internationally and for people to look at when they order a white wine, uh, a dry white wine to go with their food, it should be Chenin Blanc. So there we are, three wonderful days celebrating Chenin Blanc, the people who make it, the people who drink it, the people who understand it best, and the people who are going to take an already great grape onto even finer horizons. Congratulations to the Chenin Blanc Association here in South Africa, as well as their French counterparts, Ken Forrester, Ina Smith, and the team. It's been a terrific few days, and now we count down to the third round of the Congress in France in 2024. Raise a glass of Chenin, and we'll see you there.